a glimpse about embedded systems as we see it. Embedded systems is basically the engineering of any system where you don't see a computer, it's embedded inside the system. And uh, it gives the system qualities like intelligence or something cool, right? Examples of embedded systems are things like your mobile phones, the avionics in uh, flight control systems, uh, robotics, um, anything, any consumer appliance, like even your TVs nowadays have got a little Android uh, device inside them. Most of the things around us are increasingly embedded systems. They are there driving your cars. They are there even in smart homes nowadays, where, where just as in the past, a car used to be just a chassis with engine and uh, traction and all that kind of stuff with just a little bit of uh, electronics, which is your headlight control and stuff like that, and ignition. The automobile industry is totally revolutionized, especially with the electric vehicle, right? Electric vehicle is just motor controller, battery controller, and then motors at the four wheels and battery. That's it. It's totally transformed and it's totally transforming the economy of the automobile industry. And our industry was not ready for it 20 years ago. They didn't know how to deal with it. They were not ready to deal with the stuff, the fact of life that a car is just a computer on wheels now. And once that happens, you can do very cool things with it. I won't go into details of that. What happened in the automobile industry is hitting every single industry. Even, even something which is totally devoid of electronics, which you would normally uh, think of homes, right? Are becoming smart homes, smart offices. Think of a home, which architects are working on nowadays, where out of a 500 square foot space, you can give the feeling of a 1500 square foot house. Now you'll ask, how do we do that? Right? You don't live in all parts of the house all the time, right? So maybe when you want, the entire house can become a living room or the entire house can become a kitchen if you've got a lot of cooking to do, right? If you've started a catering business at home, then you want a big kitchen with large table space, you know, to assemble your dishes. But when your wife or your husband comes home, depends on who's doing the work, right? You might want to convert it back into a normal home. Think of a place where lots of friends have come to stay with you and you want the whole thing to become a bedroom, maybe, right? So you can have movable walls, you can have sensors, you can keep your keep an eye on your home when you're away and stuff like that. You can have lots of automation, you know, beds that fold into the walls, all sorts of cool stuff. And even air conditioning that gives you cooling only where you need it. If you need air conditioning in your home, you don't have to air condition the entire home. It's very wasteful of energy. You can just air condition that part of it so you can direct the flow to where you're sitting. So these are the possibilities that happen once you start dealing with what's called embedded systems and is there in every aspect of your life increasingly you your phone is actually a bunch of sensors with a bit of uh, telecommunications uh, ability and the sensors that you're loading into these phones is increasing like nobody's business right and uh, anyway you know where all this is going so the problem that we are facing at the moment is that you know we have we are blessed with this amazing resource in this country more than anybody else called manpower 25 50% uh, of our population is below the age of 25 and our economy is growing exponentially that means that there are huge opportunities to do startups and build products and you know all all sorts of cool things but the sad thing is that our higher education system is stuck in a time warp and it does not give you the kind of contemporary skills that you need, the new languages that you need to learn, the new technologies, because of it's very centrally controlled and, and uh, the curriculum changes very slowly. Remember, curriculum is not just a, a fatwa saying that this is NEP 2020, from tomorrow it will be this. You need to retrain the entire cadre, right? And that will take a long time. So Iyantra is a reaction to this need for the last 10 years we at iit bombay have been trying to get directly to the students and train them in cool and contemporary skills which will guarantee them jobs which will get help them in placements in higher degrees both in india and abroad right so the students who've been touched by us don't go to just an ordinary college they go to the carnegie mellons they go to the cornells and they come to iit bombay and so on in fact it's a common knowledge now that anybody who joins e yantra as a staff member 
within two years they'll be in the mtech program of iit bombay that's almost written now and especially we re we tend to recruit only from people who've participated in our initiatives uh, like our embedded systems courses software courses our uh, e-antra robotics competition innovation challenge and things like that so this is to say that the world is a very exciting place with lots of opportunities and it's there for you people if you want to learn the right skills to make the most of those opportunities but sadly most students in colleges have this mindset put in there by their parents that you do well in your college I'm Kaushik, you'll have to turn off your mic, please. Thank you. Okay. So this is where we are. What Eantra is doing is trying to equip our young people with valuable skills, contemporary skills, skills that will help you get a job or make something more of yourselves, contemporary skills. And uh, in fact, in embedded systems, for instance, we train students in languages like Luster and SCAD, which have been used to program the Airbus 380 aircraft. It's got very interesting uh, properties, but nobody teaches that in the country. We teach it in our course at IIT Bombay, and soon we'll be doing it online also. Things like that. So without much ado, I shall hand the floor over, but not before announcing that I'm hearing some noise. Suprabha, is that you or somebody else? Uh, it's someone from the participants. Okay, so we have two main initiatives which train you. One is uh, the Eantra Robotics Competition, which we launched uh, this month and registration last month, and the registrations have stopped on the twenty fifth. We train you in all these contemporary skills, right? And it lasts six months and is very transformational to students and things like that. This month we've launched the Eantra Innovation Ch Challenge, in which we train you to do startups. Now, how do we do that? First, we immerse you. See, the problem with most students have is that they are technicians, right? You tell them to solve this, they will solve it. But they don't know what problem to solve, which is what entrepreneurship is all about, which is what research is all about. Research is about finding problems that nobody has solved. But we don't train our students like that. We train them like technicians. Here's a problem, solve it. But the more interesting problem is how to define what is the problem to solve. So in Eantra Innovation Challenge, we immerse you in a problem area with the help of experts. Then we help you articulate, tell what are the interesting problems that you see. From those problems, we help you to articulate to those problems that you've said, what is a solution which can use technology? And then when you've said, what is the solution? We, we mentor you to actually build the solution, an embedded system or robotic system or what have you. And the ones who've done well at building a system, we say, hey, maybe we should take it to the market. You so we've tied, up, we've tied up with incubators, especially the IIT Bombay incubator. And then we will uh, train you in innovation and entrepreneurship to make a pitch to an incubator. And if you are successful to reach the finals, we will even sponsor you for one year. We give you a seven lakh prize to keep you funded for one year to refine your idea to ensure that it can become a startup. So that's what we do. So that competition is open for, for uh, registrations now. But today, to give you a feel, to give you a flavor of what Eantra is all about and what we train you in and things like that, are uh, Kalind Karya and Suprabha here, uh, who will uh, lead you through uh, a session on embedded systems, and they will acquaint you with the excitement of this area. So without much ado, I'll hand the floor over to Suprabha, who's incidentally, Suprabha is doing a PhD with us and uh, Kalind is doing an MTech in uh, E with us. And he was a project staff, both of them actually are, and they're also kind of upgrading themselves. Okay, so over to you, Suprabha. Thank you, Kaushik. Uh, thank you so much, sir. So now we'll get started with the session. Uh, we hope that everybody are using either laptop or any system instead of mobile. If you are on mobile, we kindly request you to switch on the system. Take a minute or so to do that. Meanwhile, we'll just begin with the introduction to embedded systems. 
So, Prabha, are you recording? Um, sir, this is being recorded live on uh, YouTube. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, am I audible? Oh, yes. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, um, welcome everyone to this particular session of uh, introduction to embedded systems. So, uh, we'd like to keep this particular session as interactive as possible uh, because we don't want just there should be one side communication, it should be a two way communication. And since it's a session, it means a discussion, right? It's not a webinar. So we would like all the participants to actively, uh, you know, engage in this particular discussion and uh, we'll try to learn from each other together. All right. So let's begin with this particular topic. Uh, the first one is like, uh, we'll talk about what is embedded systems and then uh, we'll see some examples. We'll see what are the hardware and software parts inside an any, inside any embedded system. And then we'll talk about one uh, famous microcontroller, which is Atmega 2560. And then we'll look into uh, it more. Okay. So uh, I would like to ask a question to all of you. Uh, what is a system according to you? Can anyone answer this question? In just general terms, in layman terms, what is a system? System is a group of physical components which give output with uh, which give output in output in proper input. Yes, yes, correct. So as uh, he rightly said, system is a, just a collection of or you can say group of some components where there are there is some input and there is some output at the end, right? So uh, now, what do we mean by embedded system? What does the term embedded mean? Anyone? What is the English meaning of an embedded? Buried. So buried. Buried? No, no. Built in, sir. Built in. Yes, yes. So uh, embedded is nothing but like where you have all these components and they are uh, stick together on one single platform or you can say one single chip or one single board. You, okay, so that is uh, nothing but an embedded system. And what are the parts of an embedded system is? So it comprises of hardware. Okay, uh, we'll talk about this in detail in the future uh, com upcoming slides. Then it also comprises of a software. Uh, then it also comprises of some peripherals. So why do, why do we need peripherals? Because as we said uh, before, an embedded system will have some set of inputs and then some set of outputs to, you know, uh, showcase whatever that particular system is doing or to display, or you can say, uh, the user can identify the state of that particular system via these peripherals. Then we'll need memory. Uh, if suppose that particular system needs to store something, some data to be remembered, uh, for some duration of time. Right, so we will need a memory also associated with that system. And then of course it needs power, right? Uh, human body is also a system. We need power and how do we get power from our food and water? Similarly, uh, any embedded system also requires its power. So this is how, uh, like a simple block diagram of an embedded system looks like, uh, where this particular microcontroller over here is nothing but a hardware, you can say. And the software that we write onto that particular microcontroller is a firmware, right? Then there are this uh, peripherals, which are, which are nothing but set of input devices, which are giving some input signals to this microcontroller, or you can say hardware. Based on the firmware that you have written, it will produce some set of output signals on some output peripherals, right? <clears throat> And of course, there is a memory residing alongside this particular microcontroller and this all system, this complete system 
from year to year will work on certain power. So the power can be provided via, uh, you can say any power source like maybe a DC source or battery or some analog source as well, right? So this is how an actual embedded system uh, looks like. So now let's see some of the uh, examples of embedded systems. So before that, can you yourself think of any uh, embedded system examples in your day-to-day -day life? Any answers for this? What? Mobile, sir? Yes, sir. Yes. Digital camera. Yes. Digital MP3 camera player. is an example. Mobile phone is an example. Sorry? Automobile. MP3 player, digital camera. MP3 player, yeah. If we can also say that as an... Uh, Graphic light control system. Calculator, Sorry? sir. Calculator. Yeah, calculator GPS is also system. an example. Right. So... GPS. Sorry? Processor alone, it's not a embedded system because processor is actually, a, you can say, a heart of an embedded system or you can say the core of the embedded system. Sir, so, the temperature the measurement system. device. Sorry? Biometric. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, so all answers, you, whatever, uh, you know, people who are not speaking and they are providing answers on the chat, those are also correct. So, yeah, as I was saying, even ATM is the correct answer. So, yeah, printer, so sir, printer, printer, no, printer is just a, what you can say an output device to one single uh, sir, system. Microwave, microwave. Yes, correct, correct. So, yeah, I, I'm happy that, uh, you know, participants are so responsive. Uh, yeah, this is what uh, we want to keep on, keep going on till the end of this session. So, yeah, thanks a lot. So yeah, some of the basic examples, like may, like many of you would have also played with some power, play, what do you say, PS2 game stations. That is also an embedded system, washing machine and digital camera, as you can see, right? So each of this embedded system has some embedded hardware into it, which is its own chip or microcontroller, which is responsible for doing certain tasks, right? In case of a digital camera, it will be a chip for uh, actually capturing the images or you can say the signals which are there uh, in, inside an image and then it, it also has a memory associated with that particular camera to store that particular image right and then we have battery associated with that camera so i hope you are getting all this that whatever we discussed in the block diagram in the last slide are actually uh, prevailing in each of this system that we talked now, talked right now or each of these examples that we have right so now uh, before we uh, begin into this particular uh, embedded system journey, we'll have to look on the two main factors, which are the embedded hardware and the embedded software. That's what is actually uh, an actual embedded system is comprising of, right? So what is a microcontroller? Have you heard of this uh, term uh, microcontroller before? So uh, a microcontroller is a compact integrated circuit designed to go when a specific operation in an embedded system. Okay, this is a, what you say, a good textbook definition, but yeah, it is actually 100% correct. So, uh, yes, you're right. So, any other, any other answers? Maybe like you would have come across, across this term of microprocessor as well in your digital course or any of the, what do you say, undergrad course. Have you heard of this term called microprocessor? Yeah, 8085 is the microprocessor. So can you, can someone just tell a small difference between what is a microprocessor and a controller? Why do we have these two different names? Uh, hello. Yeah. Microcontroller could be understood as a, means a controller having a microprocessor in it, wherein the controller is supposed to give, give out output with respect to what the processor is coded with. Mm -hmm. Partly you are right, but one student has answered, uh, I think Aishika Ishan. Uh, yeah, so as he has answered over there, that microcontroller is uh, basically, so a microprocessor, if you would have studied in your whatever digital course, it would have a just a brain 
and then there are some peripherals associated with it on the outside like it is it is having its own uh, memory chip then it is having its own clock the controller chip and etc even there is one chip for uh, handling all the peripherals with respect to 8085 you would have seen all these chips like 8253 and all that but for a microcontroller a microcontroller already has everything associated on one single chip or one single board and a more proper definition is that microcontroller is dedicated to perform only one specific task right but a microprocessor is in general it's a general purpose uh, what do you say general purpose controller or you can say that it's that it which it is responsible for doing many certain tasks but a controller is just responsible for doing one specific task right so that's a primary difference between a controller and a processor so yes as uh, he rightly answered it's an integrated circuit and uh, it is designed for a specific task uh, and there are types of microcontrollers as well uh, and these are the classification we'll just you know go through it in a in a moment so there are there is a classification based on the bits basically there are 8 bit microcontroller 16 bit microcontroller 32 bit and so on so what do we mean by this 8 bit 16 bit and 32 bit is like the data bus that is there in their uh, in the particular chip is comprising of or you can say it is able to handle 8 bits at a time right so that's how it is uh, 8 bit 16 bit and 32 bit then we have a uh, classification based on memory as well where uh, the memory is in, embedded inside a controller itself inside a chip itself or there will be an external memory associated with the microcontroller so that's how the uh, classification based on memory and then we have classification based on sysc and risk which is like an instruction set anyone have heard about this names what is this uh, sysc and risk don't google it right now if you do not know but yeah if you have if you would have come up, come across with it then you can uh, write down in chat or maybe unmute yes so hema has uh, pointed out correctly risk is risk stands for reduce instruction set and similarly sysc stands for complex instruction set so basically in uh, risk what you have is the instructions that are there inside the uh, microcontroller based on which the microcontroller is performing its own uh, certain task that we have asked it for those instructions are simpler right so basically the compiler will able, will be generating those simple instructions to perform some let's say addition instruction subtraction instruction multiplication and so on but in contrary uh, in the sysc instruction set the instructions are itself complex so for example there might be an instruction of performing a fourier transform directly okay so you write an instruction directly to perform a fourier transform on a certain signal so that's a complex instruction because it involves convolution and etc all other stuff right it, it involves some simple instruction right so that's the difference between uh, sysc and risc and there are classification of microcontrollers based on this instruction set as well all right so some of the famous examples uh, of microcontroller that we see in our uh, you know undergrad or postgraduate courses as well are some of this like we have 8050 on microcontroller i hope 8051 is a very common controller you would have also come across uh, then we have avr based microcontrollers uh, admega 328 is also a part of this avr family then we have pic based uh, microcontrollers uh, then arm also right uh, this all AVR based controllers are actually risk set of controllers. So the instructions are very simpler over there, right? Uh, ARM, you can say it's, it comes in both versions. Like it also, a CISC, it also comes in a risk version. So ARM is a, another set of controller. It's another family of controllers, you can say. And then uh, we have Arduino in between. Uh, how many of you know uh, what is an Arduino over here? Can anyone? Has anyone worked with Arduino before or have maybe heard about it? So I want to ask this particular question. Is Arduino a microcontroller? Yes, sir. Arduino is a microcontroller. Uh, how many agree with him? Some of pe some people are writing in the chat that it is just a development board. 
some are saying no some are saying yes so anyone has a counter argument to this like is it a microcontroller or is it a microcontroller microcontroller development board exactly yeah so uh, arduino itself is not a microcontroller okay we'll actually look into the diagram also if you see, if you see a arduino mega diagram that is there over here if i just you know zoom in over here so this you can see it's a complete development board okay and on top of this we have this uh, uh, i'll request i'll request uh, calling user to to kindly mute yeah thank you so yeah uh, as you can see over here this arduino is a like basically this is an arduino mega board they have other versions of uh, boards as well uno nano and so on but yeah for this arduino mega board this is a development board and on top of this development board we have a chip which is there on in square black color which is nothing but a microcontroller okay so a complete board itself is not a microcontroller the chip residing on top of it is a microcontroller okay so i hope it is clear to uh, everyone right now uh all right any uh any doubt in this particular topic and like arduino it's not a microcontroller so if you get such question in your interview or somewhere do not you know answer this all right so now let's move to the uh, embedded software part of it uh there is this very uh, famous concept which is associated with yeah, any yeah. software you you write in uh, embedded system uh, which is called as an event loop so what is it so basically uh, an embedded system uh, would be comprising of certain peripherals and uh, you know input peripherals and some output peripherals right now each of these input peripherals uh, let's say yeah, let's take some examples uh, vipin k kindly mute yourself all right so it would be comprising of some of the input peripherals such as it might have some sensors uh, let's say it is a gas sensor okay in a nuclear power plant let's say if you you have an embedded system which is uh, planted inside a nuclear power plant and then you have some sensors for gas monitoring then some sensors for uh, maybe uh, let's say some input devices okay some switches uh, which a user can press okay and then then you have some certain output devices like uh, maybe uh, led lights or some buzzer and something to indicate the users who are working on inside the power plant right now these are the devices now each of these devices is going to produce some set of data right like sensors will produce some sensor data the user is going to press some uh, user switch so all this uh, <coughs> all this uh, data which are getting generated are nothing but an event to a microcontroller right those are some set of events which are being generated to to the microcontroller but now uh, do you think that the microcontroller will be uh, continuously polling or you can say continuously checking the status of this devices that what is the sensor value and if it has gone beyond the threshold or whether the user has pressed some switch or not uh, certainly it won't be doing that if it is doing then it's a dumb device it's not a microcontroller it's not an intelligent device right so basically these things are nothing but an event and controller will automate controller will controller will do its own design uh, specific task and whenever there whenever such event is triggered the uh, the controller will uh, what do you say accept that particular request of handling that particular event and then it will perform certain actions uh, to be performed for that particular event and then just come out of that particular loop so basically this is how this uh, complete event loop looks like so it is initialized and then there is some timer for looking at each and every events uh, so let's say if this event 1 is occurred or not if it has occurred then it will go and handle handle that particular uh, event certain functions to be performed for that particular task once that particular task is completed it will come back from come back over here and then it will look for this particular event 2 whether that event 2 is triggered or not right so this is how it will uh, continuously loop on each of this events and it will continue doing its own particular task but this events will be kind of an interrupt to this particular controller okay so we are going to look at about uh, the interrupts as well in a moment 
So this is how any embedded software should look like. Okay. It should not continuously uh, monitor the status of the input devices, but it should po continue performing its own job. And whenever an event triggers, at that time it should, uh, what do you say, look for how to service that particular request and then just handle it. All right. So I hope this is uh, clear to everyone. So yeah, this is all about uh, embedded software. Now we'll be talking about the uh, Atmega 2560 microcontroller. So yeah. Super Mango takeover. Thank yeah. Thank you, Colin. So uh, you had uh, just looked upon the introduction of embedded system. So given the time constraint, we won't be able to explain all the concepts in detail, but uh, we'll at least try to touch up uh, to the concepts that are needed for programming. So uh, we'll begin in a while, but let me announce you that whatever uh, concepts you're trying to teach you, there will be questions based upon it. So I think you are aware that by the end, the end of this session, you'll be having a quiz and based upon that performance, you'll be getting the certificate. So whatever we try to explain, uh, please try to understand it so that you can perform the quiz well. So we'll get started with the Atmega 2560 microcontroller. Uh, so, in the introduction, as Colin mentioned, that there are different types of uh, microcontroller, and you saw an image of AVR as well. So, we'll be focusing upon one microcontroller for our rest of the session, that is Atmega 2560. So, it's part of AVR family. There are many other microcontrollers as well. Uh, so, he also spoke upon that there are different types of microcontroller. It may be 8 bit, 16 bit, 32 bit. So, Atmega 2560 is 8 bit microcontroller. It simply says that all the instructions or all the registers that we'll be dealing with will be 8-bit. And it's based upon RISC architecture. So this microcontroller specifically, it consists of 100 pins. pins. Which are those 100 pins? So uh, 86 of them are IO pins. So question here arises that what are the 14 different remaining pins? So those are power supply pins and reset pin and watchdog timer and so on. So there are 16 different ADC channels, four UART, six timers, and eight hardware interrupts. Uh, I'll not be talking about these uh, concepts here. So, but if you are uh, more interested, we have a, a MOOC specifically designed for this, wherein all these modules are covered. But for this uh, session, we'll be focusing upon the I/O devices mainly. Uh, moving forward, so he also spoke that uh, it consists of memory as well. So this con uh, microcontroller is composed of, of 256 KB uh, flash memory, 8 KB SRAM and 4 KB uh, EEPROM memory. Uh, so this is just a brief introduction of what uh, Atmega 2560, uh, 2560 microcontroller is about. So before we go ahead, any doubts here? Or if you feel that the speed is too fast, you can also post it in chat. I can go, I can try to go a bit slower but we have much content ahead okay cool thank you for your response uh now any idea about what are ports in microcontroller since you uh, since we know that our audience is much aware of what embedded system and what my uh, what microcontroller is about you might have heard of ports as well so what are ports what are ports or what are pins Okay, ports are used for serial communication. IO interfacing. One more answer and I'll will go ahead. Ports are IO lines. Okay, so basically, as you uh, as we saw that this microcontroller has uh, eighty six IO pins. So to these IO basically is input output. Okay, so to these IO pins, different devices can be connected, and these devices are nothing but the peripheral devices. So your peripheral devices is nothing but different input and output devices. But instead of using those 86 pins as it is, what it's done is these are grouped together. Okay. Uh, before that, as I said, peripheral devices can be input different input devices as well as output devices. Input devices can be say switch sensors and so on. Any examples of output devices? So there are different devices. 
ओके डिस्प्ले प्रिंटर एलईड ओके ओके ऑसम या ऑल दी आंसर इन दी चैटर करेक्ट सो डिफरेंट आउटपुट डिवाइसेस दैट कैन बी कवर्ड कनेक्ट दैट कैन बी कनेक्टेड टू आईओ पिनसर बजर एलसीडी मोटर्स एलईडी एंड रेस्ट ऑफ दी आंसर इन दी चैटर करेक्ट एज वेल सो टू डील विद दीज पेरिफेरल डिवाइसेस दीज पिनस आर ग्रुप टुगेदर सो दीज 86 पिन्स आउट ऑफ 100 आर ग्रुप टुगेदर एंड दे आर कॉल्ड एज पोर्ट सो देयर आर नंबर ऑफ पोर्ट्स इन दिस माइक्रो कंट्रोलर सो देयर आर 10 8 bit ports and 6 sorry 1 6 bit port so there are total 11 ports so 10 into 8 is 80 and here we have 1 6 bit port this is these total are the 86 pins and the uh, the port names range from a to f h j k l so your port x can be written as port a b and so on so similarly one 6 uh, bit port is specifically named as port g rest are 10 bit ports now if you see there is no uh, port called as port i any specific answer why i like acronym is not chosen here we have port a port b c d e f port g 6 bit port and we don't have i we have H J K L. Any any guesses? Why not port I? Okay. Uh, we wasn't expecting for such accurate answer. Uh, but yeah, the answer uh, written in chat is correct. Karthik has said that since uh, I is used for stating it as input device. Uh, we do not uh, use uh, i for the port name so that is a correct answer and these can be individually configured as uh, configured as input and output how these are configured we'll be seeing in next slides so i suppose there are no doubts but uh, if there are any doubts you can ask in chat and we'll respond there okay so uh, as we saw there are total 11 ports 10 8 bit port and 1 6 bit port so each port be it port a b c and so on each port is associated with three different registers which are those three registers what is their purpose and how to use it in their programming we'll be seeing that in upcoming slides uh, so first is okay this is just a, a diagrammatical representation so consider port a since it is a 8 bit port we have pins from p0 to p7 and as we just saw that each port is associated with three different registers those are ddr port and pin so what is each register we'll understand that we we'll start with ddr uh, register so full form of ddr is data direction register now just focus upon this specific word direction this uh, gives the purpose of this register <clears throat> so its purpose is to define <clears throat> sorry so its purpose is to define port pins as input and output and why, why specifically do we need this register and what is its purpose is suppose we have a microcontroller as we saw there are 86 different io pins and you want to connect some input device say switch to the microcontroller to uh, at mega 2560 but how do you tell the microcontroller that hey i have connected a switch so for this reason we have the register to tell the microcontroller that an input device is connected and how do we tell the microcontroller by writing zero to it so ddr uh, so whatever uh, specifically bit you are connecting that that is basically x and if you write zero to that specific bit uh, micro microcontroller will understand that input device is connected to that specific port and suppose you are say connecting led device that is an output device so how do you how does the microcontroller differentiate whether an input device is connected or output for input we have zero but for output we need to write one to that specific bit so in in that way the port uh, microcontroller will understand that an output device is connected to that specific port okay so let's have a small example based upon this uh, for port b so the 
पोर्ट कंसिडर्ड हियर इज पोर्ट बी मेक लोअर निबल एज इनपुट एंड अपर निबल एज आउटपुट नाउ इफ यू डोंट नो व्हाट निबल इज आई विल जस्ट हेल्प यू विद दैट इफ यू ऑलरेडी नो द आंसर जस्ट वेट फॉर कपल ऑफ सेकंड्स बिफोर पोस्टिंग इन चैट so uh, as we know that it is a 8 bit microcontroller and as i said that all the registers will be 8 bit so 0 to 7 is 8 bit nibble is basically group of 4 bits 0 1 2 3 so this is the lower nibble and this is the upper nibble okay so the question is for port b make lower nibble as input so this is the lower nibble and upper nibble as output so there is port and you are connecting an input device uh, to the lower nibble and output devices output device to the upper nibble how does the microcontroller understand that there are two uh, two peripheral devices connected we need to write zero or one to ddr register so value of dd r b so this is about port but to initialize it as input or output device we need to initialize the ddr b register so can you tell me the values here what will be the value of lower nibble b so you have to write bit wise okay we already have uh, answers in chat if anyone wants to unmute and speak that is fine as well so input device to the lower nibble so that will be 0000 output device to the upper nibble so all one so the answer here is ddrb uh, upper nibble all ones lower nibble or all, all zeros and so this is a binary format uh, when we'll be programming we'll be using hexadecimal format so we need to convert uh, the binary form into hex so if you are not aware how to convert it uh, you can simply google a uh, conversion of binary to hex so we'll group them as four bits so in hexadecimal 00000 is 0 and all ones is f so the value of ddrb will be 0x f0 okay so this is the first register that is associated with any port example here we saw was port b it can be any port uh any doubt here or shall i move forward okay cool uh next is pinx register uh, i'll be i'll not be talking much uh, in detail about this register but let's see what the purpose is Uh, so the purpose of this register is uh, to read the data present upon port pins so uh, so again here port can be any port from a to uh, l except the i port so if there is some kind of data that is sent to that port uh, to a device and if we want to read the status of that port we can do that using the pin x register and how do we do that uh, simply take a uh, take a register uh, for it uh, and save the save the value of register in the variable and you can directly read it so here is the small example on that so port c has uh, again input and output device output device connected to it and this is the value of uh, those pins we are simply using the variable x here and we are storing the pin c value in the register and the value is this is f and this is 0 so this is how the Uh, port value can be read using the pinx register so we'll not be using this in programming that's why i'm not explaining much in detail but this is just for you to uh, get acquainted with uh, so okay moving on to the next register the third register um so here while understanding we'll consider it as two different cases case one is when port x is defined as output that means okay uh, i'll first tell you the purpose so uh, suppose uh, a output device is connected to a port and uh, we need to either uh, send some kind of value 0 or 1 to it so how do we do that 
we do that using the POTEC re register. So we can send the data on the pins. Example. Uh, so since the okay. Uh, so in the example, we can see that uh, the port consider is port A. So that is why DDRA register is used. And there is some kind of initialization done here. So for all the bits, uh, the value initializes all ones. What does this specifically mean? So DDR A here is 0x FF, all ones. What does this specifically mean? okay output so this means that the peripheral device that is connected to port a is an output device so that is why all the uh, bits are initialized with the value 1 so ddr a is 0 x ff and the uh, value sent, suppose we want to uh, send value uh, as all ones or high value. So that can be written as port A 0x FF. It can be any value as well. Uh, any doubts here? So uh, you might get confused that here it is FF and here it is uh, again FF, but this can be any value, say 0x, 0, 0, 1 and so on. This is just a random value, not a specific value. So let's assume that uh, when I said that, so we got in uh, chat that output device will be connected. Suppose let's assume that all eight uh, LEDs are connected to the port A, eight LEDs, and you want to turn these LEDs on. How do you turn that on? By writing one to it or by sending a high signal. So to turn on those LEDs, we'll be writing 0x FF. So if you want to turn four LEDs on and four as off, here you will be writing 0x F0. Or if you want to turn all the LEDs off, the value will be 0x00. So the first case that we saw was if an output device is connected to the port register, suppose an uh, input peripheral is connected, so the purpose is to activate and deactivate the pull-up register. Now what the concept of uh, uh, pull-up register basically does here is, uh, so as we know that the input device is connected, let's consider that input device is a switch. So switch is connected to some pin here. So whenever, so the uh, switch can either be uh, open or closed. So here the switch is closed, here it's open. So when the switch is closed, the pin gets connected to the ground and when it is open, the pin is in floating state. So here the any random value can be read by the microcontroller. So a pull-up register is connected to avoid this state. So uh, whenever an input device is connected to any port pin, we always activate the pull-up register unless you want to read some value from an uh, analog sensor. So that concept is covered in the ADC uh, module. So as we, as we saw that either uh, we can activate the pull-up register or deactivate. How can, how can we do that? If the uh, value written to bit is 1, the pull-up is activated. And if the value written to that specific bit is 0, the pull-up is deactivated. Uh, so in the chat, we have a question is what do we mean by VCC? So VCC here simply means 5 volt and ground is 0 volt. Okay. Uh, so as I said, uh, suppose an input device is connected to port. Obviously, we'll be using DDRX register to, in, to configure that device as an input device. Next is we need to activate the pull-up registers 
whenever an input device is connected to the port. So let's see an example. So the value of DDR A register here is all zeros. That is because obviously an input device is connected. That is why the value is 0x00. Zero zero zero. So can you tell me what the port value of A would be? I'll just try to summarize. An input device is connected to port A. Since an input device is connected, we saw that we need to initialize or tell the microcontroller that an input device is connected. And how do we do that? We do it by writing all zeros to the DDR register. So this is the input configuration. Now, can you tell me based upon the explanation that what the value of port A register would be? So, uh, consider that uh, 8 LEDs are connected to, sorry, not LEDs, sorry, in input device. So, 8 switches are connected to port A register, all 8 switches. Uh, the answers in chat are not correct. Okay. Uh, we have one correct answer. Uh, one, one, okay, I'll maybe repeat the question for you. So, we, port A has eight pins and for eight pins, eight switches are connected. Eight different switches and switches are an input device. Okay, so I think now my question is understood by the audience. So the value of port A will be 0x FF. This might seem confusing uh, if you are uh, understanding it for the first time. But just uh, tell me if you have any doubts, we can explain you again. So why the value, value was 0x FF? Because we have activated pull up registers on all the pins. That is why the value is 0x FF. Uh, okay, uh, there is a doubt in chat. Kavish, have you, uh, do you still have the doubt or do you want me to explain? Okay, uh, one last time. Uh, yes. Ma'am, I understand that understand why it was zero it's like why was the pull up deactivated i did not get that part okay so uh, a very straightforward and simple explanation whenever an input device is whenever a two state input device two state is the device can either have two values five volt or zero volt so this is basically five volt is vcc zero volt is ground switch is an input device that has two specific values that is 0 volt or 5 volt so only these two values uh, so it's basically two state that is why we need only two values that should be read by the microcontroller so i'll go back to that diagram maybe this was not clear here so if the switch is open here any random so as i said uh, only two values should be read if the switch is open here any floating value will be read. So in between 0 to 5, any value can be read by the pin of the microcontroller, which is not desired. So to avoid such a con condition, the pull-up should be activated. So only when pull-up is activated, either value of 0 or 5 will be achieved. So that is why whenever an input device is connected to any port, all the pull-ups should be activated. And for pull-ups to be activated, for all the pins, one should be written to all the bits. So that is why for eight switches, we'll write all ones to the pins. So that is why we get the value 0x FF. Uh, understood, ma'am. Okay, so there is a very interesting question in uh, chat. Uh, by Satish Kumar, what is the 
डिफरेंस बिटवीन फोर्ट एक्स एंड पिन एक्स ओके सो वेन वी सो आई जस्ट ओके सो वेन वी सो दैट देर आर एटी सिक्स पिन्स and these 86 pins are grouped together and they are configured as ports so this port has physical pins okay so suppose port a so this this has eight physical pins and each port is associated with three different registers as we saw ddr pin ddr a pin a and port a register so please don't get confused between a physical port here and a register port here all these registers have bits and this port has physical pins okay so the these pins are accessible to us we can we can connect either input or output device to these physical pins but we can't really connect any device to bits these are bits only used for initialization okay so we i hope the question was very interesting in fact while i was studying this even i had this doubt i hope that doubt is cleared let's see let's check the time okay uh, we'll have to rush a, a bit fast um, so first example uh i want quick answers if you have doubt just quickly ask uh, based upon either ddr register ddr or port registers if there are no doubts we can just quickly solve the example so your concept will be much more clear here uh example one is make port d as output port and send hex value to 0x b5 we'll break down this question into two parts first the uh, part is port d is output port so to tell the microcontroller that an output device is connected to port d register how do we do that either tell me registers okay we already have a answer here so to make port d as output we will be using ddr d register here and the value here would be 0x ff excellent okay uh the next part of question is now the microcontroller knows that some kind of output device is connected to port d and how does the, uh, the microcontroller know because we have written 0x ff to ddr d register now it's saying that send some kind of value some hex value and that some value is 0x bf to port d so what which register and what value would it be okay so we already have a answer in chat um there is a typo error uh, port d is equal to 0x b5 but it's okay you have written b f here uh, so port d value would be uh, 5 is 0101 01, and b is 1011 now those who don't know uh, binary dec decimal everyone knows 0 to 9 what is binary and what is hex you can simply google it uh, you'll get a chart of conversion and then you'll know how to convert binary into hex make a group of four bits and from the chart you can directly take the hex values so first part of question answer is ddr d is equal to 0x ff and next part is uh, sending the hex value to port how do we do that by writing this value to the port d register uh next example uh, we saw one example on output port so let's move on to the next part that let's assume that some kind of input device is connected to port a so quickly which register and what value will be this focus on the first part of question port a has input device connected to it uh, i want the answer uh, with register name with register name okay excellent okay the register name is correct but 
ओके वी हैव दी करेक्ट आंसर्स नाउ डी डी आर ए इज इक्वल टू जीरो एक्स जीरो जीरो यू माइट बी गेटिंग कंफ्यूज बिटवीन जीरो एंड वन जीरो इज फॉर इनपुट डिवाइस वन इज फॉर आउटपुट डिवाइस एंड नाउ इफ यू रिकॉल दी कीस टू दैट वी सो वाइल द एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ पोर्ट रजिस्टर whenever an input device is connected to any port all the pull ups are to be activated so tell me the value of port a here so by the time i actually ask you the question i am getting the answer that is excellent so the value of port a will be 0x ff Uh, someone is asking, ma'am, if it is activated, then it is one. Yes. So, as some kind of input devices are connected to all the pins of port A, we are writing all A to one here. So that is why the value is zero x ff. Okay. Are you finding this interesting, or is it confusing, or are you feeling boring? Interesting. Okay, at least one participant out of one thirty-seven is saying interesting. Interesting, ma'am. Yeah, someone's confusing. Not boring. Sorry. Ah, uh, sorry, we couldn't hear you. If you could repeat. I'm interested, ma'am. Not I'm boring. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Because we have little time and so much to explain. Maybe. you might seem that i'm going bit faster but i want to <laughs> cover the concept as well a uh, few people are saying confused as well um how do i help you you can just ask us doubt or with examples it will be more clear so we'll see one last example it's okay to be confused if you are introduced uh, to this concepts for very first time so confusion here means that you are learning and paying attention so even that is acceptable third example hi again we'll break this question into multiple parts connect leds to lower nibble and switches to upper nibble of port so first example we saw that output device is connected example 2 uh, we saw input hi, device hi. is connected uh, please hi, mute okay now third example we see combination of two now lower nibble is 0 1 2 3 and upper nibble is 4 5 6 7 so this is lower nibble this is upper nibble i won't be helping you with any answers here connect leds okay i'll show just the diagrammatic representation so this is some port port a so leds are connected to the lower nibble switches are connected to upper nibble of port a now what your task is to tell me the answer of ddr a next is turn on the alternate leds so to turn on the leds that means you have to send the value to that device and to do that you will be using port register we have to turn on 0 and 2 so these two leds so i don't want to write what i'll write so to turn on the leds we'll be writing 1 to it and remaining you should understand what the value of 1 and 3 should be and then you have to activate pull up for all the switches switches are the four switches are here you know what value is to be written to 1 and 3 and to activate the pull up for all these four switches the value should be written to these four bits 4 5 we already have answers i am assuming that you are understanding everything so the value of ddr a will be 0x 0f value of port a will be 0x f5 now the interesting part which we did not study in much detail uh we have to the third part is oh 
the solution is already here read the data from pin a register on lower nibble we will get the same data but on upper nibble it will depend upon the switch position so what does this specifically mean we did not read this part of question initially and we can directly see the solution okay i'll ask you a tricky question here uh, the what does pin register do quickly it reads the value of port register okay physical sorry i'm so sorry not the register so what does pin register do it reads the value of the physical pins of the port register so this part port a not the port register but the pins of port now uh, if you see two leds are off and two leds are on so the value read by the lower nibble is 0101 but the value read here is 1101 so can you tell me why why not all ones and why not all ones here and why zero here okay great uh, we have uh, answer in chat that switch 5 is closed so this is closed that is why the value read here is zero rest all are open that is why value read is one switch five is close connected to ground excellent okay so if the i want the diagram again what would the value of pin a register here be one quick answer and we'll move on no tell me the entire hex value in a so this will be one zero one zero tell me the upper nibble okay one 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 zero i hope you have understood all three resistors and all three examples that we saw based upon that and we come to the end of module a brief summary that we saw in this module okay please explain again oh, which specific part okay why did we get i am assuming that the doubt sorry i have to go behind to explain the value zero and one year Um, so Dhaya is asking to explain again. So I'm taking your doubt it as uh, when this switch was pressed, why zero was read, and when the switch was open, why was uh, one read? So if you see when the switch is closed here, uh, there is a connection and the zero uh, and it's connected. The switch is connected to ground, and that is why the value read here is zero. And when the switch is open, we get a direct VCC connection here. And that is why 5 volt or one high value is read. So that is why when switch is open, switch is open, we get a direct VCC connection. When switch is closed, we get a direct path. That is why 0 is read. Is this... Are there still doubts here? do you want me to explain again okay awesome so what did we see in this module we saw a brief introduction of what is embedded system what a microcontroller is then we, then we specifically focused on one microcontroller that is atmega 2560 we saw the architecture a brief architecture it's a 8 bit controller it's based upon uh, risk architecture and number of pins what those pins are and mainly the three registers that are associated with each port ddr register pin register and port register we saw purpose of each register how to initialize or configure it 
so this part will be using uh, while programming so we are hoping that you have understood at least what the purpose of each register is and how to initialize when to write one and when to write zero if you have understood this much from this module it's more than enough so a break of 30 seconds and we'll start with another module now meanwhile you can post in chat Uh, I hope you guys are not and it's not the lunch time yet so you'll not be sl feeling sleepy as well so we'll start with uh, next module it's a very interesting one so if you have heard about this or used it before um, it it would this will be a revision to you but if you are getting introduced it for very first time please pay attention it's interesting and confusing as well so uh so we'll see what is the need for masking we saw we just saw a module on uh, uh, uh but let's see why masking is to be it's a very important concept when you switch to programming and what what are the different masking operators we'll see which to use when and so on okay why do we need masking uh in the last module we saw that uh all eight eight minute why, why am i not able to write okay so we saw that for uh all the eight pins we were supposing that all the uh switches are connected to it okay we did not see that only one specific pin is connected to uh a sp one specific device is connected to one specific pin or a different device is connected to a specific pin so when we are doing we are connecting different devices to different pins that is where masking is needed and it is a good practice to consider it why because when we were initializing uh, when we were writing any value to port register we were writing the value to entire eight pins so even if only one led is connected to pin 2 we were writing value to entire 8 pins so the value of remaining pins was getting changed which is not desirable okay if we are dealing with only one specific device we should be considering that specific device uh, sorry that specific pin only this pin will be configured as an input and only value will be written to that specific pin so to do that so to not alter the state of remaining uh, bits or pins we use masking okay i hope you understood why do we need masking at first place so avr uh, or this or all the microcontrollers in this are not bit addressable they are only bit accessible you um, how do i say this um so to avoid that condition we need masking yes uh someone yeah anurag in the chat is saying to hold the previous value this is the exact uh explanation that i'm trying to come up with here so if you want uh to change the state of one particular pin or bit but keeping in mind that rest seven pins should remain as it is so the previous state of those pins or bits should uh, remain unchanged in that uh, state we need to use masking uh, so uh, mainly three different operators are used for masking first is the or operator whenever we want to set a particular bit that is write one to it we need to use or operator or and operator when we want to reset a particular bit so or is to set set is writing one to a bit reset is writing zero to a particular bit and this third uh, very uh, basic operator that is to toggle a particular bit as i said set is to write one reset to zero if the previous state is zero and you want it to be one 
or it is 1 and you want it to be 0 this is called toggling you are changing the bit value from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 so that is nothing but toggle and if you want to do that XOR operator is used so how these are used we will be seeing in uh, next slides there are two more operators called as not operator and shift operator we will see each of these operator in detail now starting with the not operator so it is used to perform negation on all bits uh, I am very sure that uh, most of you in the audience know what negation is. Uh, any quick answers? Uh, tell me if the value of bit is 1 and I am using negation, what the value will be? 0. Okay. Exactly. So, the symbol used is um, this one. <laughs> okay, cool. So, uh, if the value of uh, say uh, register A is 1000011 and you are using not operator here. So tell me the value here. Directly tell me the hex value. Don't tell me in terms of binary. Okay, we are getting answers in binary. Okay, cool. So 1 will turn to 0. These will be 1s and these two will be 0. A group of 4 bits. And the hex value will be 0x. Audience is much more smarter than us. We are so glad to have you. So the, okay, so the operator here is the negate operator. And the value will be, oh, 0x7c. Uh, so this was the not operator used to perform negation moving on to the shift operator the purpose of this operator is to shift all the bits by specified bit position not a very great explanation so we'll see what does this really mean so there are two types so shift we know it can either be left shift or right shift so there are two types based upon that and this is how the symbol looks like if you want to shift the bit value to the left this is the operator that should be used and for right this is the operator so you'll be actually using this in code okay so please pay attention so consider an example so the value of a is one zero 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 blah 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 one one and you want to left shift so this is the symbol of left shift left shift a by two bit positions so this is the purpose shift bits by specified bit positions so the specified bit position is two bits so this means this one will be going here and this will be going here so these two ones will come here these will remain as it is sorry i'm so sorry everything will be shifted so these two ones will come here and similarly all the bits will be shifted by two bit positions so this will be somewhere here and please note that this uh, there is no uh, cyclic uh, way here this one won't be shifted to b1 and here these zeros will be appended there is no cyclic it will only be left shifted so these two values will be appended by two zeros so this is how the value looks like Okay, so uh, we have seen left shift by two bit positions. Let's understand right shift by two bit positions. The uh, idea is same. The bit values will be shifted by two bit positions. And the second is there is no cyclic uh, bit position that is happening. Whatever bits move, new zeros will be appended. So tell me the right shifted value. So this will, this one will come here, these will disappear and zeros will be appended. Initial bits will be lost or not? Yes. So zeros will be appended 
okay cool so i thought uh, you'll be confused in, in the left shift and right shift but since we are getting correct answers i am again assuming that you have understood and with this we'll move forward so two operators we saw not to perform negation shift operator it can be left shift or right shift left shift are by the two inward arrows and two outward arrows the greater than signs for the right shift so shifting happens based on the uh, specified bit positions moving on to the or operator as we saw earlier it, it is used to set a particular bit uh, this is the symbol that is used and this is something called as truth table uh, assume that this is the bit previous bit value and you want suppose uh, the previous bit value is 0 and you want to set that particular bit so you will be oring that bit with 1 and the output received will be 1 getting suppose the previous bit value is 0 but you are not aware that it is already sorry 1 but you are not aware that it is 1 and you want to set that particular bit you will be oring that with 1 and the truth uh, truth table for or operator is 1 or 1 is 1. Let me just clear this. So, basic uh, definition of or operation is uh, if one of the inputs to, uh, so there are two inputs here, A and B. If any one input is 1, the output will be 1. If both are 0, output will be 0. We will see example based on the OR operator. Uh, so, you know the purpose of OR operator is to set a bit. Now, let us consider some register has a value 0x83. We will say it is unknown to us, but we already know it. Uh, and we want to set second bit. So, this bit, the value is 0 and we want to set this bit. So, this will be 1 and keeping the rest data intact. So, this is why we want to use masking because the status of other bits should not be changed. So, this should remain as it is. But 0 should be changed to 1 because we want to set this particular bit. How to do that? So, since we want to uh, set this bit, we will be using OR operator. This is the expected output as we saw in the uh, previous slide. Only this will be changed, rest as it is should remain same. So, to do this, we will be using OR operator. I will just write the truth table here. Okay. Now, truth table for Okay, so only this should change, right? So, to set that particular bit, we'll be writing 1 to it as we saw in uh, previously. And we want to keep uh, this bit value as it is. So, to keep this bit value as it is, suppose the previous value is 1 and we want to retain the status of this bit, we should be writing 0 to it. So, we'll write 0. If the previous we will be using OR operator here and the symbol is this and if the previous bit value is 0, we still want to retain the status, we will be writing 0. So, for 1, we will again write 0. Now, just uh, look at the truth table here. 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0 remains 1, again 1, 0 remains 1. 0 1 0 1 entry here is 1 0 0 0 0 if you see the first combination it remains 0 what is 1 0 it's again 1 so if you see this is the expected value 0 the uh, b2 it changed from 0 to 1 which was expected and rest all bits are the value is retained 
सो वन जीरो 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 वन वन सो जीरो इज चेंज टू वन एंड रेस्ट ऑल आर दी वैल्यूज आर रिटेन बाय यूजिंग और ऑपरेटर so a very simple explanation when you are whenever you are using or operator to set a particular bit write one specific to that bit and rest all zeros so the value will be retained so if we see the hex value of this sorry not this one the value that we are oring with this is the original value this is our final answer that we want and how do we get that by using or operator and the values that we saw so this values is 0 0x 0 0 is 4 so if the original value is or with this specific value this is the expected output will get so in the programming we'll be writing in this form some kind of register name is equal to the original register value that is this one Or that is this symbol. The new value that we are oring with is zero x zero four, and this will give us the final expected output. So register name. This is one way of writing a register name or with that value, or you can write in this form as well. Have you understood? okay oh my god i'm getting an unexpectedly yes answer so i'm happy now okay so we saw or operator now let's uh, make it a bit complex and use or operator with shift operator so we saw the uh, answer that we got the expected output if we or the original value with 0x04 that is how the b2 will change its value from 0 to 1 keeping in mind that rest all should remain unchanged So zero x zero four zero 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 one zero zero. So this is nothing but zero x zero four. So if you see this zero x zero four can also be written in this form. One left shifted by two bit positions. One and it is left shifted by two bit positions, right? This is I'm sorry. So this is one bit position and two bit position. So instead of is actually using this. using this value okay uh, so instead of actually using this value you can write one left shifted by two bit positions and you'll get this value as simple as that so here we knew that uh, this specific bit was to be set that is why uh, we specified the bit position as 2 but uh in a general form we can write it as register name or and one is getting shifted by specified bit position okay this is just a um, general way so this was for one specific pin if there are multiple pins this is the more generalized form register name or with there is one pin say 2 there is one more say 6 so you will be oring this so specific bit positions left shifted by 1 moving on so we saw uh, to set a particular bit or operator is used and uh, the bit was so bit value changed from 0 to 1 now if the bit value is 1 and i want to reset that value which operator to use and operator so the purpose is to reset one particular bit or multiple bits Uh, this is the symbol that is used this is the truth table so we'll directly use this truth table uh, in the example so unlike or operator this is and or so we saw similar truth table for or and in or if one of the input is one at least one of the input output was one on the contrary if you see truth table for and if one of the input is zero all the output the output value will be zero unless both the inputs are one so zero and zero is zero 
zero and one is zero. One and one is one. So that is why uh, that is how we read a truth table. Zero or zero is zero. So at least one input one output is one for our operator. At least one input is zero output is zero for and operator. Okay, if this is uh, confusing, we'll directly understand the uh, uh, operator through an example. The example here is, oh my God, please don't have a look at the chat because we already have the explanation there. Oh, sorry, the final answer there. Uh, uh, thank you. And we'll continue. Consider a register has some unknown value that is already known. 0x87 that is written as 1000 7 is 0 1 1 1 we want to reset pin 2 again we are dealing with b2 here previously it was 0 we uh, used or operator to set now it's 1 and we want to reset it so we are using and operator again we don't want to alter the uh, remaining data so this is the expected output with all the bits same as the previous value this is the expected uh, output how do we do that okay so this is the um, original value now we want a value this is the original value we want a value that we want to end with so that we get the expected output here now what the value will be we'll see we'll use the truth table for reference Okay, now to reset B2, we need to write 0. So, and we want to keep the remaining data unchanged. Now, if we want 1 to remain add as it is, we need to write 1. Why specific 1? Suppose, okay, let's consider this as case. The previous uh, value is 1. But if I write 0 to it, the value will be changed to 0, which is not expected. So, if we write 1 to it, the value will remain same. So, 1 and 1 is 1, 1 and 1 is 1. Now, next 4 bits are 0. Those should remain 0. How to keep that as 0? By writing 0 to it. And again, the last bit value. Okay, I'm sorry here. We need to write 1 here. So that the value, so 0 and 1, 0 and 1, the value stays 0. And for 1, we'll keep it, we'll end with 1 and the value, so 1 and 1 will be 1. So, this is messy, we'll see here. So, original value ended with this value gives us the final expected output to 1 is changed to 0 and rest all the data is remain same. So this was some 0x83 sorry 87 now let's see what this value is 0xfb and this is the value that we are getting. Okay, there is one doubt in the chat. Uh, that is because I messed up in my explanation, I suppose. So, if we see, uh, so this is understood that we want to reset uh, this bit. That is where we are writing 0 and we got 0. For 1 to remain intact, we have to write 1 from the truth table as you can see. But now these 4 bits are 0 here. So, if we write 0 here, 0, 0 can still remain 0 here, right? We are getting the expected output. Then why are we writing one year? I'll be explaining this. If anyone wants to uh, answer in chat, you're welcome. 
now in the question it was written that this va value is unknown to us right now for example sake or for our understanding we have assumed it is zero so what if these four values were one okay this is unknown to us we don't know what all is connected to microcontroller and what does status and what all is if it was one and if we would have written zero to it instead of one so one zero would have given us zero so the uh, original value was one but just because we ended it with zero the value is changed from one to zero so that is not expected so a very simple explanation whenever you want to reset any particular bit or bits you should uh, you should use on and operator that is uh, uh, understood so you should and zero to only that specific bit and rest all ones to the remaining bits so that will keep the status of remaining bits unchanged i i want a cleaner slide okay so for or operator if you want we, it is used to set a particular bit or bits so we should write one to that specific bit that you want to set and zero to all the remaining bits and on the contrary to reset a particular bit you should write zero to that specific bit and one to all the remaining bits i'll write here specific r is for remaining this is for specific one is for remaining so i hope your doubt is clear and the value so original register value ended with the new value that we got will give us the final expected output so using this uh, operator which shift operator so the answer that we got to us register name any register let's suppose port a ended with this value will give us the final value so if you see ff ff was oh, sorry fb was this value so this can be also written as one left shifted by two bit positions that we saw previously too so this is one left shifted by two bit positions if we use negate operator here the value would turn this so this is nothing but the original value that is fb so one left shifted by two bit positions and a negate operator here okay I'll keep this slide here. so first you have to uh, left shift it by specific bit positions and use the negate operator and you will get the desired value so this can also be written in the generalized form as one left shifted by specific bit positions and negating the entire value and did so this value ended with the original register will give you the final expected output so this is for the multiple pins negate operator left shift specific bit position and sorry or operator to be used here you should not use and you are supposed to use or operator in this formula So this was about five operators that we saw, not operator, uh, sorry, four operators. In left shift, we saw left shift by specific bit position, right shift, we saw or operator to set a particular bit and operator to reset a particular bit and these two uh, operators with the shift operators as well. Okay, so... Uh, there is one example uh, assuming that a LED is connected and you have to configure uh, uh, the re required registers but with using masking. If we were not using masking, uh, you would have straight away given me the answers uh, based upon the uh, module that we saw previously but we will be using operators as well. Okay, 
so led is an output device let's assume that it is connected to third pin so this is port h 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so not all leds are connected it is just connected to ph 0.3 so led is connected here now we need to tell the microcontroller that led is connected so how do we do that we do that by using ddr h register so ddr register so output device so uh, one will be written to it all zeros so this is without masking okay and output device is connected to third pin so i have only written one year so this is uh, inappropriate way because we are not using masking here so to use masking uh, so this is for your understanding now what we want to do is we only want to set this particular bit and we have to keep the rest seven bits unchanged so what we'll be doing is we want to set this bit so these are three bit positions so we'll be using left shift operator we want to set it so and by three bit position so this is the masking operator that we'll be using since we are setting this uh, bit will be using or operator so if you see the value written will be ddrh because we are dealing with port h register we are setting that particular bit because output device is connected so or operator and we have left shifted uh, one by three bit positions so this is the value that should be written to ddrh register now quick doubts on this have you understood or are you finding the concept of ddr that we studied in last module the masking operators that we just studied we are trying to uh, use both the concepts in the example here it would have been very easy if all the uh, all eight leds would have been connected to port h but since only one is connected and rest we are not sure whether input is connected or output is connected we don't know the status of remaining so that is why we are using masking here how are we using it we are left shifting one by three bit positions that is by three and to set that bit we are using or operator so we know the register we know the value now uh, let's take a simple task you want to turn on the led and turn off the led we have told the microcontroller hey led is connected so it's an output device we told the microcontroller by configuring ddr register now to turn on the led we need to write one to the port register and then zero to the port register how do we do that so to turn on we'll be writing one the explanation will remain same we'll be setting the bit and we'll be not altering the value of remaining so instead of ddr i'll write port here so we'll get the same value here but now we so suppose this is unknown to us i'm just taking it as zero okay now the value to the port is one because led is on now i want to turn off the led so one should be uh changed to zero to turn off the led given that the remaining seven should be unchanged so how to do that to reset a bit we'll be using and operator and if you recall the previous explanation um will be left shifting by specified bit positions that is three and then using negate operator here so port h and is equal to the negate operator and the left shifted uh, one by three bit positions so this is how led an output device is configured as configured through ddr register we have written one to that specific bit by using or operator then we have turned off the led by using and operator a messy slide but i hope the uh, concept is cleared now register and masking a quick three yes if you have understood all doubts 
one, two more yes only then we will go to last operator. Okay, great. So one last operator that we have uh, yet not seen is toggle. So toggle as I said if the previous value is one and you want to change it to zero or it is zero and you want to change it to one. Now you see that this can be simply done as done using uh, and operator or or operator right yeah but only when you know the previous value so if you want it to continuously toggle one two zero zero to one in a loop we use the xor operator so this is the symbol and this is the truth table so i think from uh, uh, last two operators or and and you now know what the truth table is two inputs and uh, and one output so uh here xor is uh, okay so if you see these two entries just a second in the xor if two inputs are identical the output is zero these two are identical if both the inputs are zero or both the inputs are one the output is zero but if you have uh diff not different but alternate inputs the output is one so we don't have a specific example here but uh, if you try to uh, use truth table for an example you will know how this works um, and this is how the form looks like the register name this is the symbol one left shifted by specific bit positions and this is for multiple pins so here we come to an end of two modules the input output devices and uh, masking operators we'll just uh, quickly see example based upon this okay so just a second i'll stop my screen sharing So uh, we ha actually we had one more concept to explain to you and then we were going to switch to the examples but given the time constraint will uh, so the next module or next concept was interrupt uh, we'll try to explain you th uh, through the program we have two very interesting and um, very interesting programs based upon the concepts that we just covered so Kalind will uh, help you with that so if you are on system or if you are not please switch on to one because we'll have quick uh, two examples and you'll find that a bit more interesting so we saw theoretical examples but let's see that in the programming part over to you Kalind. Okay, yeah, so I hope I'm audible to everyone, right? Anyone can maybe write yes in the chat. Yeah, okay, thanks. So uh, now what we will do is uh, we'll have a short experiments uh, based on, you know, what all we have learned so far. Uh, now to begin with that, uh, we are actually using a, what do you say, an online simulator which is available for uh, AVR or you know even for ARM controllers and etc. So we are going to use that as a uh, way for explaining some projects or some coding part. So I am actually sharing one link in the chat right now. Uh, so people who are on laptops can actually uh, you know start just click on this particular link and you will be able to uh, what do you say? You will see such page like this, right? Uh, this will be the page for you, if I'm not wrong. Uh, are you able to see this page? Yeah, so what you should do is you can download uh, the task one and task two zip files uh, and go to the uh, like Vokvi website like this. Uh, I have written a, you know, a readme file inside this, which is where the where the link is present for this vokvi.com okay so you need to just open that particular uh vokvi.com page uh 
click on a new project okay uh, go down scroll down and just select a new project based on arduino mega like this over here okay uh, once you click on that new project you will be uh, you know seeing this sketch.ino file on the left then you have some diagram.json file and a simulation on the right hand side all right so what you need to do is just extract that zip file that i have provided to you okay so basically uh, inside that zip file you will have such a sketch.ino and some diagram.json file already available to you uh, can any one of you try out and explain i mean try out and let us know whether have you are you able to set up this project all you need to do is download one of this task one zip file okay extract that zip file and copy paste the sketch.ino and diagram.json file into this new project that you created over here this is a bit of hands on that uh, we are trying over here so that it is uh, you know, you are able to relate to what we are doing in the theory yes uh, has anyone tried out so you know we can then continue with the what do you say the session yes there is an iono file in the zip file uh, which is there you just need to what do you say extract that zip file copy paste the content of the iono file and paste it over here in the whatever new project that you created okay so i'll uh, proceed with it uh, so there are like we thought of covering three tasks so that's why there are three zip files but we'll try to cover only two of them because we studied only two concepts okay uh, one is uh, how to use the input output ports how to access them and the other is to how to use you know uh, do masking and shift operator concept right so we'll just uh, what do you say you know take up this two parts over here and in via this two small examples okay so in this particular example what we have to do is while others if you are not able to you know do this particular thing uh, open the walk view website and set up this project that is fine uh, you can just pay attention and you know let me know uh, in the chat when i'm asking questions you can just answer the question okay uh so yeah uh for creating a new project you just need to go to this website called wokwe.com scroll down over here you will have some options for starts from scratch so you just click on arduino mega and then you will be uh able to see such ino file and json file like this okay arjun all right so now in this example what we have to do is we need to blink an led which is connected at uh port h pin 3 and we saw that in the uh what do you say in the example as well right like in the example we just supravan took over there an led was connected at port h pin 3 and what we need to do is we want to blink that particular led at the rate of one second okay so now if you observe over here this led over here is connected at port uh, i mean pin 6 on this arduino mega board now first question why why we are using arduino mega and not arduino uno and so on because we studied about at mega 2560 microcontroller and this arduino mega has at mega 2560 microcontroller on the board all right so that's why we are we have chosen arduino mega next it is connected to pin number 6 over here and we are saying that the led is connected at ps3 and why why are we saying this because if you click on this link uh, you know which i have provided over here in the comment you will land up on this diagram over here okay and in this diagram if you see uh, as i said that this atmega 2560 is a 100 chip uh, sorry 100 pin ic 
uh, and these are the pin names of all these 100 pins. And if you observe on this particular part, this one over here to the left, PS3 is nothing but uh, digital pin 6 on Arduino Mega Board. Understood? So this is nothing but a pin mapping, uh, which Arduino has done on development board that PS3 is recognized as digital pin 6. Okay. So that's why uh, we have connected this uh, blue LED on pin 6 over here. And that's why we say that LED is connected also on port edge pin 3. I hope this is clear. Anyone has doubt in this? How is port edge pin 3 and digital pin 6 connected or you can say related to each other? Uh, any questions kindly write down in the chat. If no questions kindly let, let me know like we can just proceed. Okay. Okay, I assume people are not answering. I assume that you are you have understood it. Okay. All right. So now uh, what we are doing in the very beginning is like we are, uh, you know that any C, C program that you write begins with the inclusion of some header files, right? So similarly over here, we have some header files to be included on the very beginning, which is, uh, Lokesh, you have a doubt. Yeah, what is the doubt? You can unmute. Lokesh, you can unmute and ask uh, the question if you have. Okay, by, okay, by the time Lokesh types down, we can just proceed further. So hash include avr slash io dot edge. So this particular header file is responsible for, uh, you know, declarations of all this registers that we studied right now, DDR, port, pin, et cetera, et cetera. And then one more library is for, uh, which is, uh, to generate the delay. I said like, we want to blink the LED at a rate of one second, right? So this is the header file, which will have a function which will create a delay of certain milliseconds. All right. So, uh, Mohammed Sharik, uh, it's okay. Like I'll proceed with the session right now. And later on, uh, once we have completed with just, you know, one or two tasks, I'll explain how, how you can do that. Okay. All right. So now what we are doing is we have this int main function. And as you know, this, uh, yeah, you can now write down in the chat or you can, you can unmute. LED is an input or output device. Can you tell me? Is it an input device? Yeah, certainly it's an output device. It's not an input, right? So now uh, you can tell me now if you want to initialize this particular port pin as an output device, which register will we use? Will we use? We have written in the code as well on the line 20. Everyone agrees that it is DDR, but which port it is connected? Port H pin 3. So that's why we'll use DDR H as the register. All right. So DDR H is the register and uh, what we have to do, like what value should we provide over here? First of all, DDR H is the register that we know. Now to set that particular pin as output, we know that we want to write one to that bit, right? We want to set a bit in the DDR to tell that this is an output device which is connected on whatever port edge pin 3. I hope everyone agrees with me over there. Right. Now we want to provide one. Basically we want to set the bit right now. We want to set the bit then which operator did, uh, should we use? We just studied in the masking session or operator. Yes. So we want to use or operator and how do we uh, provide which bit to be specified over here, which value will be odd with? Will you shift operator also over here? So can you tell me the answer? Yes, exactly. Hariram has perfectly provided his uh, correct answer. So what we'll do, we'll write, we want to, uh, what do you say? We want to write logic one on pin three because LED is connected on pin three, right? And we do not want to hamper any other bits of DDRH. That's why we are using shifting operator over here. Yes, Akash, this is actually embedded C programming. This is different from, this is actually C, but you are actually accessing the registers and you are, you know, playing with that register. So that's why this is called an embedded C programming. Okay. It's not a language, but it's just a way of style of programming. Okay. So everybody has understood this part, right? Like this is how we are actually 
telling the atmega controller over here that this led connected on ps3 is an output device i hope this line is clear to everyone okay so i'll proceed further now uh, once we have done that initially we want to uh, set logic zero like we, we do not want the led to turn on suddenly as as soon as we start the simulation or as soon as we power the arduino board right so we want to initially give logic zero to port h pin three or you know turn off the led initially so how do we do that turning off means not giving logic zero and giving logic zero means what is it is it reset or set it is reset right so now to reset we use which operator and operator yes hariram you are brilliant you are actually giving correct answer all the time so yeah so as he has already pointed out uh, we are we have to use and operator and uh, as we all know in the session only last we understood that we have to uh, give logic zero on port h pin 3 so that's why we'll use left shift operator and we'll use negation operator before that okay so that will give logic zero only to port h pin 3 but rest of the bits will remain as it is so i think this is also clear to everyone so now click quickly tell me how to uh, give logic one so now inside the while loop what we are doing is we are setting the logic high or uh, basically we are turning on the led <laughs> then we are generating the delay of one second kindly turn off your mic oh, Max, it's Amrit, can you turn off your mic? Ah, like, I don't know. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, Am I audible now? Amrit Mande, kindly turn off your mic. Like, because only one person should speak. No, I mean, if it will, it will be difficult. Mute yourself. Yeah, anyway, so I'll proceed with the uh, session. All right. So now we want to give uh, logic uh, one to uh, this uh, particular uh, pin over here, right? Uh, and we want to turn on the LED. Right? So what do we do? Okay, okay. अबे नहीं हुआ क्यों भाई? क्या पता? Speaking, we can't hear. Audible to you. Uh, like Gargi, am I audible to everyone? But I don't know someone is someone else's mic on. I'm trying to ask them to mute themselves. Anyways, okay, okay. Let it let me proceed. I'm sick. It's coming now. Okay, now what we want is we want to uh, set logic loop on this one. So present uh turned on the LED, then we give a delay of one millisecond one second, and this is the way we are giving the delay underscore delay ms. Uh, with the Present, is thousand. Yes, thousand is in terms of milliseconds. Okay, so that's why this is one second delay. And then we want to set logic low. And we just did it above, right? On the line number 23. So I'm just copy pasting over here. Okay. So I hope this is clear to everyone. Yeah. Uh, we, we are turning on the LED via this statement. Uh, then we are giving a delay of one second. Then again, turning off the LED. And then a delay of one second. All right. So now let's start the simulation and then we should see the output. So I hope this output is as expected. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I hope this is clear to everyone. Uh, how did we, uh, you know, perform this small experiment for turning on and off the LED? 
and with the delay of one second. All right. So now uh, let's do a small task for just. Uh, Adiya, ready? Can I put it in a video? Whoever is speaking kindly, turn off your mic. Okay. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, what is that percentage fluctuation? I didn't. Ah, okay, okay. The percentage fluctuation that you see on the, which was seen on the top right, was uh, nothing but. Let me let me begin and then show it to you. Uh, okay, this is not the program actually. This one. Yeah. So the percentage over here is nothing but showing you something in you know memory that is being used on the Wokvi uh, server where this particular simulation is running. Okay, and this is the time, real time, how much time it has elapsed from the simulation as, since the simulation has started. All right, so I'm just stopping the simulation and we'll move on to the second task. Uh, okay, fine. So uh, if you want, you can try out this small task, uh, which is just that uh, there are these two switches and on press of this green switch, the green LED should turn on and on the press of this green, sorry, blue switch, the purple LED should turn on. Uh, I would suggest that you should, you can, you know, try out this experiment at your end. I know that, you know, we have already provided the solutions in the directory also in this, on this server. Uh, but I'll suggest that, you know, you can just try out and figure out that what should be the condition present over here to, you know, what do you say? Determine whether the switch is pressed or not, and then perform whatever logic to be uh, to be written over here. That is turning on respective green and purple LED. All right. So with this, we are actually coming to an end of this uh, session. Uh, we actually appreciate that all all the participants have you know stayed long back over here and patiently listening to us. I hope whatever we covered is uh, you know, understood by everyone, uh, whatever topics we took and whatever hands on we covered in this particular session, uh, are there any doubts we can just take in a minute or two that we have, and then we can directly start with the quiz. Any questions if anybody has, you can maybe write down in the chat if you want to. So meanwhile, uh, we received the doubts in the chat. Uh, we have Amit here. Uh, he wants to talk about the EYIC competition that Sir mentioned initially. So, uh, Amit, is there? Uh, yes, I'll uh, start. Uh, so Amit has promised us that he won't take more than three minutes. So let's see if he can <laughs> stick to that timing. So once that is done, we'll quickly post the uh, quiz link to you. Okay, I'm over to you. Okay, thank you. I'll have to share my screen. Is that okay? Uh, yeah, please do. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll stop this and uh, I'll just watch it. Oh, yeah, okay. 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 Yeah, that you can. Amit, you are not audible. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. So given the tight uh, timeline of three minutes, uh, what I'll do is I'll play a short video first, which will give you an introduction about what EYIC is. I think Kavisar has already explained you in the morning, but uh, just let me play this and then I'll start with the uh, innovation challenge of this year. Yantra Innovation Challenge is a competition that trains students in innovation and entrepreneurship. It nurtures young minds to articulate real problems in society and to solve them using technology. It immerses participants in problem domains and helps them articulate problems, which then they solve and use the solutions as a basis for startups. It's a platform to showcase solutions to incubators and to build your dream startup.
Guidance is by e-yantra engineers and industry experts. So join us. Registrations begin on the 1st of September every year. Join us to solve real problems using technology and to engineer a better world for all of us tomorrow. Okay, great. So uh, that was the introduction about EYIC. So this time's innovation challenge, we have collaborated with Deutsche Bank. We have collaborated with Sign, which is the official incubator at IIT Bombay, IIT Roorkee. We have collaborated with IIT Tirupati, GIC Hub at IIT Bombay, DSSE again at IIT Bombay, uh, SEPT University, Design Bridge Foundation and Idea. So all these uh, partners that you are seeing over here will help you throughout your journey of EYIC in the form of different MOOCs or there could be different interactions with them, doubt sessions, etc, etc to explain you about the theme. Okay, so this is what we are doing. Uh, more details will be available on the website. So maybe you can have a look at that also later on. Uh, we this time for the first time we are offering one crore startup seed funding to the top teams that would be reaching the finals. So of course, there are some terms and conditions, but yes, you will get a total of one crore startup seed funding from all the uh, partners that I have mentioned. And there would be 25 lakhs of prizes uh, to be won throughout the competition in the form of cash, goodies, etc. And you would be able to build skills in IoT, GIS, product design, and robotics using our MOOCs. So the entire schedule, timeline, everything has been mentioned on our website, which is uh, eyc.e-yantra.org. In the schedule tab, you will find all the details regarding what is going to be there throughout the six month journey. The registrations have already started. Uh, it will go on till 25th September and there is an early bird till 10th September. So don't miss this opportunity because you'll get a 20% off if you register before 10th September. Added to it, uh, there is an awareness program tomorrow at uh, that is 7th September from 4 p.m. We'll mail you all the details about the WebEx link and everything, which you can attend to gain more information about this, because I think this meeting has already been long enough. So I know you guys are saturated and you want to give your quiz. So we'll have another uh, program tomorrow for this. If you want, you can join using this link and all the details uh, which are available on the website. We'll go into the details and you'll get to know better. Uh, yes, 4 p.m. onwards tomorrow. And there is an additional discount if you use the referral code. I'll put it in the chat as well, which you can use while registering. So you'll get a flat 10% discount over and above the 20% discount, which is already there on the website till 10th of September. So that's it. I'll put the details in the chat. And yes, uh, over to Supravam now. Uh, okay, so you, ex you exceeded your time. So as you promised us, you are wanting more than three minutes. It took complete four minutes. Oh my God. Okay, thank you, Amit. Uh, so, as you know, if uh, you are willing to participate in the competition, please do. Please don't wait for the last moment. Uh, go to the website. Uh, the website link will be posted in chat. The referral code uh, will be in chat. Uh, we have just posted the WebEx link for the tomorrow. If you have more doubts, go through the website today. Have a look. If you have any doubts, join the meet tomorrow, and uh, we'll be having Yatra mentors there to respond to your queries. So quiz link uh, is being posted in the chat. Uh, just uh, just share the quiz link, quiz link with you all in the chat. You all will only have 10 minutes to solve it and it begins now. All right, so uh, by the time if anyone has any question, we can just answer it answer it so yeah yeah so there was i think one question god of has asked how should i bootload this code in arduino because we don't use your arduino id okay so uh, uh what check my code too
Thank you. 